All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, it's been a long winter. Summer has arrived. The sun is out and it's pretty beautiful. So we're gonna get back on the Safara. It's an SV23, as you recollect in some of the previous videos. And the project that we're gonna do this time is installing surf pads. And that's simply for convenience of surfing. You can surf without them with like a, what's called a suck tab, which is actually suction cups on the side of the boat. Uh, but new boats, they got surf tabs, which are electric actuated sort of trim tabs that create a nice surf for surfing. So let's get into it. Thanks for watching, stay tuned. Here we go, this is the Safara. It's been parked here all winter. I put a big white tarp over top of it and kind of draped it over the uh, wake tower. That worked great for keeping the snow and the sun off of it for the winter. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna work on the back and I've already got started a little bit. So under the swim grid, this is the swim grid, we're gonna install surf taps. I have masked off part of the uh, left side here. That's also referred to as the port side. The, the starboard side or the right side, but that one there is already uh, tacked in as you saw on the timeline. So let's go over there and take a look at what is going on. On the starboard side, I already have two stainless screws drilled into the transom. This is a piece of stainless steel hinge. This is an aluminum surf tab that I had a buddy of mine actually just shear out and form up on his shear and break. So this is pretty much all they do. They go down, they go up. When you're in the regular driving position, they stay in the up position, both sides. Then when you want to get into surf mode, you lower one side down depending on which side you surf on. So the whole intent is that you're trying to create a offset wake displacement. So the prop here pushes the water out, and in a normal scenario, the water comes out even. But by putting this tab down, what it does is it creates an offset wake. So um, the majority of the water pushes over to one side, casting over the wake and creating a nice curl and wave, and it's something that you can surf on. Uh, that along with obviously putting lots of weight in the ballast tanks. Uh, pushes the boat into the water, makes the boat heavier. The heavier the boat is, the more water you have to push to offset that weight. The more water you push, the bigger the wake. So what we use on these is these. These are Lenko electric trim tab actuators. These will actually just mount also to the transom and then down onto the trim tab, sort of like this and like this. And these are just 12 volt all they do is they get 12 volts. Uh, you just reverse the polarity to make the trim tab or, or the electric actuator go in or out, which makes this trim tab go up or down. So that's it. They're real simple. They're not complicated. I know uh, some of the boats have fancy computer systems that control these. They're really on the back of the boat. They're all the same. They're just like this. Some of the brands actually have surf gates, which are a gate that comes out sideways. They do the same thing as the surf tabs, just it's a different concept. So let's keep going with this installation and we will see where it leads. the three and three quarter uh, spread between the pivot points marked out on the back of the boat. So now let's go ahead and mount the first actuator.
seat. We bolted it on here, bolted it in here. We hope that the dimensions, the geometry is good, but let's give her a test. Perfect, it's about a quarter of an inch away from the swim grid. Let's try it the other direction. There we go, what do you think, bud? Great. Yeah, okay, so uh, this one is pretty much mounted exactly where it's gonna go. We only have a few last things to tackle and that's just drilling out the rest of the uh, hinge locations and we have one more mounting location for the actuator and one more mounting location uh, where it attaches to the surf tab. It's, it's just mocked up right now. We also have to deal with this, this wire and there's a spot on this bracket that'll actually has a rubber tapered seal that can go right through this bracket. But I need to make sure that on the inside of the boat that actually goes above the floor of the boat. If it doesn't go above the floor of the boat, then what we can do is we can get a little separate uh, gasketed attachment point that'll go up higher. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna check that out on the inside of the boat, drill the rest of the mounting points and screws and bolts into the surf tab, and we're gonna make this thing happen. have all of the screws set into the fiberglass. These all went great, very minimal chipping on the gel coats. I'm really happy with that. And we also, uh, we also tried to see where the wire was gonna go through and it's not gonna go through this spot. The floor of the boat is about here. This is where the top of the actuator mounts to the transom. So we're gonna punch a hole in up higher, but we're gonna wait on that because I need to get this little part that the wire goes through and then there's a little plastic piece and a rubber seal that goes over top. So we're gonna wait on that. So for now, we're just gonna keep going on the other side. brackets on. I even used a little bit of this goof off to clean off all the Sharpie marks. And that's a little trick for you if you ever have Sharpie on aluminum. It's a great way of marking it up when you're cutting out so you don't make a mistake. And it comes completely off with a little bit of goof off, a little bit of paint thinner, or any type of solvent. It wipes right off like there's no, there's, there's no trace of it. So we are going to use a little bit of this Sikaflex 291. This is what it is. And this is a marine grade adhesive slash sealant and we're going to put these into all the screw holes on the back of the transom so that we don't have any leakage whatsoever so these are ready to go let's get these on the board. Surf tabs are in. That one there, this one here, 
you can kind of see it's mounted to the transom all the bolts are in uh, so the last thing to do is right there you can see there's some wiring that's got to be done and as i mentioned to you before the floor line in this boat is about here and as you can see the actuator mounts about here so it's below the floor line so what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to run this wire through the transom up higher and i looked at the little lenco fittings and they're like a hundred bucks for two little tiny things. So instead of buying those, uh, I'm I have the rubber seal that came with these brackets. I have the little rubber seal, but I'm going to 3D print the little collar that's going to go over that. So let's get to the computer and get on the printing. Okay, 3D printing is complete. I did not show it on video because it's really not very interesting. But this is what we made. It's made out of PLA with 100% fill, so it's strong. It uses three stainless steel screws, just like this, to attach to the back of the transom. In the middle of this, we have a tapered hole where a rubber uh, sort of grommet will fit. The wire, the rubber grommet sits around this, goes through this hole, and as you cinch it to the back of the bolt, uh, the, the tapered hole kind of makes the rubber grommet sort of squish down and seal it up to the back of the boat. We'll also use some of that Sikaflex sealant as well. So let's go ahead, drill some holes and get the wires through the back of the transom. What do you think, dude? It looks great. How did the drilling of the fiberglass go? Okay, just a little bit nerve wracking. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, the nerve, the, the drilling of the fiberglass is totally nerve wracking. It never feels good to drill a hole uh, in the bottom of your boat. But regardless of that, these things turned out great. Uh, you can see that the sealant is actually squeezed out of there. So these are nice and sealed up. Next thing is wiring. So let's get on it. Okay. So to accomplish this wiring, we are going to run the wire, which is right there from one side of the boat, across to the other side of the boat. We have the other trim tab wire right here. And then we're going to run this wiring down the side of the boat, under these storage compartments and over to the driver compartment. And then in the driver compartment, we have these two accessory switches and these actually don't do anything. So we're going to replace those accessory switches with these trim tab switches. Let's get at it. So for wiring up these trim tabs, this is what we got. This is called cab tire. It's essentially like heavy duty extension cord and 12 gauge. We have this, we have a terminal kit and we have some of the switches here somewhere, right here. Here's our switch. So we have the switch. So what we're gonna do is pre-crimp our terminal ends on these switches so that we can get our proper connections figured out in the garage. And then we'll take this whole assembly out to the boat and throw it in there.
Zapstrap's wired. We connected it to the hooks, and now we just can uh, zap strap it to the actual surf depths itself and the actuators. And we're done this section, so on to the next. Okay, dude, do the one that's closest to me, okay? Is that up or down? That's down. So hold it down now. Okay. So we got this one backwards, so we have to switch this one around. Okay, let's check the other side. Is that down or up? That's down and hold it down, hold down a bit. Good. Yeah, dude, all we gotta do is turn the wires around, then they'll work properly. Let's, let's do it right now, okay? Okay, ready dude? Starboard side down. Great, starboard side all the way up. Awesome, uh, port side down. Uh, hang on a second, that was port side. Now starboard side down, up. Great. Starboard side down. They work perfect. Yeah, put them both up. Oh, hang on, no wait. Go uh, port side down, which is my side. Awesome, okay, now both up at the same time. That's awesome. Okay, so that's the uh, pretty much the wrap for the surf tabs. We have a few other uh, items that we need to do to get this boat ready for the water. Uh, just some maintenance item and some de-winterizing. Let's get at it and let's get this boat in the water. another little project that we want to do in the boat and that's a way of attaching our phone to the dashboard and where we can have it playing music and charging at the same time so new boats have this built in and ours doesn't what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this generic phone bracket that's actually meant to attach to the handlebars of a bike and we're gonna mount this to the dash to do that we 3d printed this little round bracket hey bud maybe you can show how it attaches so it just goes in like this, like this. perfect and on the dash, we had this gauge right here. This is a gauge that was just a blank gauge. It doesn't do anything. 
let's go ahead and put this modified bracket in where this gauge was. Right, dude we got the boat all cleaned up how does it look great the boat looks great check it out so this is the boat put back together uh, we started the engine we hooked up to a hose to just kind of make sure that everything was running good we checked the oil we put together the uh, intake line from the lake water that we had taken off for winterizing so we connected that back on and then also at the front of the boat I don't know if you could see but under here we reinstalled the heater so this heater, well, I always take out the heater core in the winter just because it's hard to blow out all of the water out of it and it's a fairly fragile thing. So we just take it out, put it in the garage so it doesn't freeze. This is how we put the seat back. And then also, this was something that we replaced this year. This is the heater vent and this bezel was actually broken. So we, we 3D printed out a new bezel and attached it on there. So that's about it. The boat's not perfect, but it's good enough for now. When we get on the lake, we'll probably tidy it up a little bit more, hey dude? Yeah. And uh, that's about it. Time to hook it up to the truck and take it to the lake. See you later. Pretty exciting. 
This is what we got going on for our lake. This is the beautiful Okanagan Lake. It is quite a stunning lake, I gotta say. Yep. Lots of beautiful waterfront homes. It's a little bit, it's a little bit early season right now. It's just the beginning of May, but we gotta try this boat out. So Grayson here, he's gonna go on the boat, uh, behind the boat on the wakeboard. He's gonna try it out. We're gonna just have a lot of fun, try out the trim tabs and yeah, let's just see how this goes. hot shower turned on because this kid was so cold that he almost started to just like shake so nice thing about this boat is it's got the super hot shower so you just get him close to the boat and sprinkle him down and he warms right up we'll give it a shot later on in the season when the temperatures are just a little bit warmer mm -hmm. 